Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to private locations in Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. First, I'd like to provide a brief summary of what they are and why you would use private locations. Then I'll demonstrate how you can create a private location to perform synthetic testing on an application running in a Kubernetes environment. A private location is a name you create in Splunk Synthetic Monitoring to represent a custom location from which you can run synthetic tests. And to run synthetic tests from private locations, you must also set up one or more private runners within the private location to do the actual communication with your test targets and with Splunk Synthetic Monitoring. And these are a few common use cases for private locations. You can test private applications that are not exposed to the public and test pre-production applications which don't have public staging sites. So for instance, you may integrate private locations into your CI-CD pipeline as part of your testing process. They also enable you to test from locations not currently supported by Splunk Synthetic Monitoring's public locations. Now that we know what private locations are, let's see a demonstration of how to deploy a private runner to a Kubernetes environment and create a simple synthetic monitoring test. So the first thing that I want to show you is the test target and the environment in which it's running. I'm currently logged into a virtual machine that's running a K3S cluster. And I've deployed to that cluster a Java application called the Pet Clinic that is composed of microservices. Let's take a look at K9s to see how this application is deployed. I'll navigate to the default namespace. The application is deployed to the default namespace and for each of the microservices of the application, we have one pod running. So we have things like the admin server, the API gateway, the config server, and then we also have the pet clinic database, as well as a load generator. The load generator is actively creating traffic on our application. And the pet clinic application is exposed to the internet. Now let's take a look at the services that are running in this namespace. What I want you to notice are the API Gateway and API Gateway External Services. For the API Gateway External Service, it's of type load balancer, and it also has an external IP. The service is mapped to port 81, and the virtual machine is also publicly accessible to the internet. So if I navigate to the virtual machine's IP address in my browser on port 81, I should see the Pet Clinic application, since the API Gateway is the entry point to my application. And I've already opened the application in a new tab using the virtual machine's IP address. And you can see here that we're accessing port 81. This is the home page of the pet clinic. And from here, I can navigate to other pages. Let's navigate back to my terminal. The other service that I want to highlight is API Gateway. Notice that this service is a cluster IP type and it does not have an external IP. It is currently mapped to port 82. This service is available from within the cluster using the service name as well as port 82, but I would not be able to access this service outside of the cluster. So what we wanna do is utilize this internal service as kind of a pre-production environment to perform uh, synthetic testing using a private runner. So I'm going to deploy a private runner to this Kates cluster and configure a synthetic test to utilize the cluster IP of this internal API gateway service. As I said before, you can think of this internal service as a pre-production version of software that you want to perform synthetic testing on before promoting it to a production environment. Or it could be some sort of internal tool or web service within your corporate firewall that's not accessible on the public internet, such as your corporate intranet. Let's navigate to Splunk Observability Cloud and create a new private location. From the home page, I'm going to navigate to Synthetics. From here, I'm going to select the Settings cogwheel, and I'll select Private Locations. As you can see, there's already been multiple private locations created. I'm going to create a new private location. And then I'll select Add. Once the private location is created, it takes me to the Setup Runners page, where it provides detailed instructions on how to deploy this runner in various runtime environments. In my case, I'll deploy this to my Kubernetes cluster, 
so I'm going to look for the installation steps for Kubernetes. I'll select this dropdown, and you'll notice that we can deploy the runner using a Helm chart, which is what we're going to use. If we were to select Kubernetes, it will provide a manifest that we can then manually apply to our cluster, but for simplicity, I'm going to use the Helm chart. So it provides several Helm commands to first add the Helm repository, and then we perform a Helm repo update, and then we actually install the Helm chart for the Synthetics runner. And it automatically injects the runner token into the command uh, so that it can authenticate with Splunk Observability Cloud. So I'm going to copy these commands to my clipboard, and then I'll navigate back to my virtual machine. I'm going to exit K9s, and then I'll paste in the Helm commands. And it looks like it did successfully apply the Helm chart, and it named the Helm chart release My Splunk Synthetics Runner. So if we take a look at K9s, we should be able to see the runner deployed in our cluster. And in the list of pods in the default namespace, there's one additional pod running, which is called My Splunk Synthetics Runner. So we have confirmation that the runner is successfully deployed to my Kubernetes cluster. Let's navigate back to Splunk Observability Cloud. From here, I'll navigate back to the Synthetics homepage. And I'm going to select Create New Test and select Browser Test. I'll provide a name for the test. And then I'll click Edit Steps or Synthetic Transactions. And we'll keep this very simple. We're just going to navigate to the home page of the pet clinic. But we're going to do so using the internal cluster IP that's only accessible from within the Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to update the protocol to HTTP. And then the URL is going to be the cluster IP, which is API-Gateway on port 82. Then I'll provide a name for this step. And then I'll select Return to Test. Now the other important part of creating this test is selecting the private location. You can see right now that there are multiple AWS locations selected, and I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to search for the private location that I just created. And this is the correct one that I just created. I'm also going to update the frequency to be one minute so that we can see data pretty quickly. And then I'm going to select Submit. I'm going to give this a couple minutes to populate some test runs. OK, so I've waited several minutes to allow a few test runs to complete. And if we scroll down to this chart here, you can see those test runs as the purple dots here. And if I scroll down further, you can see the test results for recent runs. And you can see the most recent one has successfully uh, completed. I can open up a specific test run by selecting this circle. And at the top of the page, we can see the film strip, which is a visual representation of the actions that were executed during uh, this browser test. And we also have video playback, which provides a recording of the entire test execution. And it looks like our private runner was able to successfully access the cluster IP of our pet clinic application. And just to further drive the point home, if I were to open this URL in a new tab, it is not accessible on the public internet. Additionally, if I were to replace API Gateway with the public IP address of the virtual machine, it would still not work because we're accessing it on port 82. And port 82 is not exposed on that virtual machine. Before we conclude, I want to navigate back to the private location. I'll select the settings cog, and I'll select private locations. From the overview page of the private location, there are several runner metrics that I can monitor over time. 
These include the queue latency, the queue length, and the number of jobs currently processing. And if I scroll down, I can see a list of runners as well as tests associated with this private location. I can also manage runner tokens from this Manage Tokens tab. So from this tab, I can delete tokens or create new tokens. This particular private location doesn't have an active runner, but if I were to navigate to the most recent private location that I created, we should be able to see a runner listed. And in the list of runners, you can see the runner ID, the host name, as well as the runner version. In this video, we primarily focused on the deployment and setup of private locations. But if you're looking for a broader introduction to Splunk Synthetic Monitoring, be sure to check out the videos that I linked in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, we'd love to hear your feedback. And if you're interested in trying Splunk Observability Cloud yourself, you can navigate to this link to claim your free 14-day trial. Thanks for watching.